Georgia. Let's bring in criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool on all of this right now. Okay, Brian. So as Alex said, the, the guy I was watching the whole thing too, no emotion, not, no emotion. Um, but so much emotion in these victim impact statements. You heard the sister there, we played the mom earlier as well. Uh, thoughts on, on what we saw in that courthouse today? Yeah, Connell, great to see you again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm furious at, at Ibarra. I mean, even during the trial, one of the police officers testified that when, when Ibarra and his brother were brought in for questioning, they were giggling. I don't know if you heard about that. Hmm. These guys were laughing, like, because they, they had to get up early in the morning and leave their house to go to the police station. Well, I got news for Ibarra. He's going to get up giggling now for the next 75 years looking at a 7 by 10 cell. I mean, that's what strikes me the most about this case is this guy's heartless. Look at him. I mean, he didn't show a single emotion until reality hit. There was a mountain of, of, of physical forensic evidence against him combined with equally profound uh, circumstantial evidence that led to a, a very quick verdict by this judge. And, and, and this, this is you know, one bit of progress uh, in our country to, to try to, to, to limit this, the crimes committed by uh, undocumented immigrants. Now, your point about anger, a lot of people felt that, that, man, I just, you couldn't watch that, especially the family, and not feel emotional as they were speaking. But, you know, I, I don't, you do, you're a criminal defense attorney, and I know people ask this all the time, and I already know the answer. I know everybody deserves uh, a defense, but boy, in this situation, what about defending a guy like this? I mean, what, what do you say about that when people ask you? Yeah, that, that, that's a hard question. Um, you know, and I've had a couple of cases where, you know, I, I'm still getting hate mail from, from a client I represented in South Florida. Hmm. Um, but I got to tell you, the Constitution affords everybody uh, the right to a fair trial. And, and when you're a lawyer representing Connell, a, a defendant in a case like this, you know, you, you, you have a fiduciary an ethical duty to give the best defense possible. And in our country, everybody is entitled to event to a defense. So who's going to do that, right? Some of us have to step up and, and, and do that. And, and, and you have to block, you, you, you mentally have to block the fact yeah. that something like this is so horrific and just focus on the legality, focus on what you should do. And in this case, this guy at Barra's lawyers, I mean, they blew it. I mean, if, if this guy had any remote chance at all, he had to take that stand and give an alibi. Where were you when this murder was committed? But to sit there and just say, oh, I'm not taking the stand. And there's all these two witnesses identified. You've got, you know, hair, uh, fingerprint evidence, hair evidence, blood spatter evidence. I mean, that was ridiculous, too, the, the, his defense. Right, waves so the right to the jury, uh, on, right? the whole Why thing. Why did this guy plead guilty, Connell? Why did this guy step up and just plead guilty and not put this family through what he what he just did? I guess may as well have, a, a, you know, given your points about that. And he waived the right to the jury trial. He's talked about some of these other points. Can I ask you about this um, this Susan Smith case as well? I mean, this is back in the news. I mean, it was a huge, huge story. As I was talking to Brian about uh, 30 years ago, this woman had strapped her two kids in the car and let the car go into the lake. But she first, you know, she made a big deal of the time. She says, well, I was carjacked. There was a, a black man carjacked me and went on TV. And made a scene about it, and the whole thing was made up. And Brian made an interesting point, and I want to play a clip from what she said at her parole hearing. She was denied parole. He says he didn't see any tears, and that was the thing years ago. They said, well, you know, she's, she's pretending to cry, but nobody sees any tears. This was Susan Smith today at the parole hearing. Watch. I didn't lie to get away with it. I really did. I was just scared. I didn't know how I could tell the people that loved them that they would never see them again. I didn't know how I could tell David he couldn't see his sons again. <laughs> and I'm, 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 just, I'm sorry, I don't know. I know that's not enough. Yeah, I mean, her face is right up to the camera. You don't see any, you, know, you see her go up with the tissue, but you don't see anything. I mean, she's, um, she's full of it again, right? Just like 30 years ago? What do you say? Yeah, exactly, Connor. What, what people miss a lot in the legal system is jurors and people like you and I and average folks on the street, they're good at instinctive reactions to people like her, right? You can look at somebody like that and you can hear her for five seconds and you can feel it, right? And she was a scam artist, what, 35 years ago? And she's doing the same thing today. So I, you know, and, and another thing, quick thing, a statistic you'll find interesting, I, I looked up. This parole board, yep. uh, the last 494 parole hearings, 13 have been granted, so good luck 
to Susan Smith. Yeah, because she's that, up again in two years or every two years, right? So you're saying yeah. that she's oh. never getting out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She, she, she scammed the system. She blew it by lying about how that death occurred. And how do you forget about something like that, Connell? You think 35 years go by and, oh, whoops, let's close our eyes and open them, and here's the new Susan Smith. That's not how the legal system works. That's not how the world works. Thank you, Brian. As always, uh, Brian Claypool uh, with us on both of those cases today. Bye. Um, okay. Uh, 